Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to take a really simple chord progression, something you would have played very often on the piano and try and use simple concepts, not too much of fancy music theory and just make the chord progression sound very sophisticated, a lot more professional. So as you play songs, as you play music in different genres, maybe one of these techniques would resonate along with the usual tried and tested triads, okay? So first off, let's go through the basics. I'm gonna give you a chord progression, explain it to you on the G major scale. Then we look at the normal way in which it is played by a pianist. And then we'll try and take it to five different variations or five different techniques which are really easy all you need to do is I guess get your keyboards out play along with me also get a notebook so you can write it down as the, the lesson goes forward and you can also consider getting my notes each variation is put out there and it'll be waiting for you on patreon you can find the link in the description being a member on patreon will also be a great support for our channel so do do consider going to patreon.com and you'll have other offerings you can do workshops you can do other tires which are available there so give it a check and see how that goes let's get started so i'm taking g major scale one sharp f sharp and the chords are going to be g major e minor a minor D, D major for this entire lesson so our job is just to make this more so sophisticated G major G B D E minor E G B A minor A C E D major D F sharp A and obviously you could play these chords with inversions to make them easier on the fingers G major G B D E minor I'm playing G, B, E, just moving the pinky to E, then A minor, coming back to normal, A, C, E, and then you could do D major as F sharp, A, D, or A, D, F sharp. So inversions are always there, and let's look at the available chords of G major. You have G major, which is 1 major, A minor, which is 2 minor, B minor, which is 3 minor, C major, which is 4 major. D major which is the 5 major E minor which is the 6 minor F sharp diminished which is the 7 diminished back to G you could also form 7th chords 1 major 7th 2 minor 7th B minor 7th which is the 3 minor 7th all 7th chords are 4 notes in uh, amount C major 7th D dominant 7th has the minor 7th up top and a major chord here E minor 7th F sharp minor 7th flat 5 also known as a half diminished chord and you end with G major 7th so that's just the basic palette of chords and the basic theory of the G major scale which has one sharp namely F sharp what is the chord progression again it's a 1 6 2 5 G major, E minor, A minor, D major. It's quite popular, so I figured we'll use this and then make it a lot more sophisticated. The first technique I have for you is called spread chords or spread voicing or open voicing. So you take the triads, namely G major, E minor, A minor, D major, write them down in a circle. So I do G, B, D clockwise, E, G, B clockwise, a, C, E clockwise, D, F sharp, A clockwise, but don't count the notes clockwise. Count the notes counterclockwise. So instead of putting an arrow that way, you're going to put it against the clock. So G, B, D won't be seen that way. Instead, it'll be seen as G, D, B. So you're going to do G, D, B at the top end. A bit tough to play with one hand. Some people can. I struggle a bit with some of the with a lot of the chords. So it's very tough to play it together at least. You can arpeggiate it, but you can use two hands for this lesson. In fact, even on stage at a gig, you could play the chords with two hands like this, and you still have room to play a melody line, which we can look at in a, a later lesson. 
okay and i have done spread voicing in a series on youtube we put it together in a playlist so do check it out it's in the description so coming back to the progression so you take g major instead of looking at it as g b d which is a bit timid or very mellow kind of a sound you can play it as g d b what i like about it is it sounds good in every point of the keyboard you play it super high it doesn't sound squeaky it sounds very peaceful very beautiful on the top end you can go all the way top okay because the notes are very clear and because they are clear you can even play them down below down in the bass clef there we go so let's try and do this with all the chords it's it's written down for you as well so g d b not g b d it's an instant way to play chords in the left hand because this is a horrible muddy kind of sound so you could go g d b you open up the chord can't reach just play it with one of the fingers like the thumb in the right hand and then e minor would be e b g again e g b not counted clock counter counter clock so e minor g major e minor now what do we have a minor instead of playing a c e i do a e high c then you do d major so g major e minor a minor d major and it opens up the hand also to be a lot freer you can make patterns you can play a lot deeper also use the top note to make it more melodic float it a bit or play it higher As single hits these chords sound a lot better i think than it sounds too happy or too normal or annoying sometimes i can this chord will these chords will hold their ground just by hitting them you don't even have to play a rhythm you don't have to break them up just hit it's also in a rather new sound very few piano players use this so even in actual mainstream songs you find playing like that so it's a good way to give people a refreshing sound and it'll make your music also stand out a bit more make it a lot more unique so that's about spread chords let's now move on to option number 2 the second way to make chords a lot more exciting which is what we call as slash chords so with a slash chord we define it as a chord like a g major chord with a bass note which is not the root of the chord so in other words you play g without the the true root of the chord which is g this is the usual way we all play g major but slash chords will access notes which are part of the chord at least in this demonstration you have other more fancy or slash chords as well but what are the other notes of the g major chord you have b you have d so decide where you want to play it maybe a bit higher g so this will be called g major vanilla g major you can play g major with a b 
completely changes or transforms the sound. It's a lot more tense, a lot more spicy. Definitely doesn't sound as resolved as that. It's a very powerful concept, changing the bass note of the chord. So this is G major normal. G major with the slash. It just lifts the chord. Whichever inversion you play in the right hand, it won't matter. The sound will still be very tense because you're changing the root in the left hand. So, what can you do with this exercise? You can do, take the same chords, G major, E minus, A minor, D major. Again, G major, E minor, A minor, D major. But play each of those chords with different slashes. So, I'm doing G major with B. E minor with G A minor with C D with F sharp F sharp B in the bass over G major E minor with G you may not like that but I'm just giving you the options A minor with C in the bass D with F sharp in the bass and Remember, earlier we learned spread voicing, so why not combine spread with slashing and go something like this. I'm spreading out the triad but starting with the B. Remember, you still count the chord, counter the clock. B bass. E minor with a G bass. A minor with a C bass. D major with an F sharp bass. Let's play that again. Also, kind of adjust the chords real time, you know. You can play D major normal and then go with D over F sharp, which goes back to G. So, I just did an overkill of slash chords. You don't have to use slashes for all the four, but you get the idea. I Practice it and see how you can combine slash chords with spread chords or slash with normal. And once you get that feel going, spread the chords out. It'll sound beautiful. Trust me. Okay, moving forward. This is a nice technique. I think to start off for the left hand, you go root, fifth, and then a fifth with respect to the fifth. So that'll be G, D. And you go D's fifth, another fifth, what I call as a stack of fifths. That's a fifth and another fifth. So it ends up being a ninth chord or a ninth voicing. Very sophisticated. G, D, A. Do the same thing for E. E, B. What is B's perfect fifth? F sharp. Then A. What is... Yeah, A is 5th, E. What is E's further 5th? B. And then D with its E. So, this is where I would have heard it first, I think. Every breath you take. Guitar players do this a lot. What musicians do, especially guitar players, they'll then take the, the stack and then add in the third, the top third, which is also making it spread, or play around with the octave. Maybe the octave, the ninth, 
which is that fifth stack and the third which could be minor third if it's a minor chord major third if it's a major chord you get a lot of interesting stuff like also a nice piano accompaniment technique if you can so start with 15 and then the 9 on top let's take the chord progression we have for this lesson Sounds great in the right hand as well. Great for an intro of a song. It. So it ultimately starts with the fifth, and then. extends it to the octave what i told you now the extended stacked up fifth and then you can do the third major if it's major chord third minor if it's a minor chord personally i do this a lot in the left hand but you get the idea you can do it with both hands so so you could do the ninth stacked ninth is essentially above the octave so you this is called eight because it's the octave 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and just to tell ourselves that it's a note above the octave we call it 9 but if you com- compare that it's actually the second degree of the scale it's also a perfect fifth from the first perfect fifth d hence i call this stacking diatonic fifth so all the chords again keeping it very simple let's go back to our chord progression g major E minor, A minor, D major. Just doing that is a nice intro, I think. also very different so a nice sophisticated sound and it takes you away from that usual triad kind of sound which is nice but you don't have to use it all the time so i'm now going to move on to a four note technique which is our fourth strategy of making chords more interesting this is taking seventh chords but giving you a voicing which i think will be very easy you don't need to know jazz music and you don't need to know fancy piano technique to get this done because two notes of the seventh chord are going to be played in the left hand the other two are going to be played in the right hand i have a chart for you which you can see in our notes it's also there on patreon that will help you learn it better you play the same fifth which we learned earlier so what are my stacks of fifths g d e b a e d a so g d and what is its upper third b We've learned all of the spread stuff. So what do you do in your right hand? Now first plot out all these chords. It's going to be G major 7th, E minor 7th second chord, A minor 7th third chord, D dominant 7th fourth chord. Cuz we are trying to play 7th chord. 7th chords have four notes in them. G major 7th, E minor 7th, A minor 7th. and d dominant so a good way to play this also a clean way to play this would be 1 5 in the left hand and play either a 7 3 in the right hand or a 3 7 in your right hand depends on what you like i like both actually so this could be a nice way to play g major E minor seventh rather because you're playing the minor third and the minor seventh. A minor seventh. D dominant seventh. And 
what I like about the right hand in this technique is you can either do a 3-7 voicing or you can do a 7-3 a voicing both have a nice vibe quite different also but the same chord so this is a 3-7 voicing will still have a 1-5 in the left hand with a 3-7 in the right hand what I do here I'm doing a 3-7 still or I could do a 7-3 voicing and then A minor with a 3-7 voicing please note that the 3 and the 7 of a minor 7th chord are minor 3rds and minor 7ths 3-7 voicing or you can do 7-3 or 3-7 and then I love this voicing for a dominant which is 3 and 7 flat or you could do if you want to go deeper you can do 7 flat and 3 let's put it all together without me talking too much E minor 7th A minor 7th D dominant. Two notes in the left and two notes in the right hand. A minor seventh. Lot more sophisticated, I think. It's an inspiring way to play chords. Why I say that is it can motivate your melody as well. One reason being, yes, there's a fourth note involved in the in the game. And the other thing is the chords are voiced. The notes of the chords are jumbled or ordered differently and they are spread out. So you can make out each note very clearly and that will motivate you to hopefully come up with a melody or improvise something. So I have one more strategy for you to make chords very sophisticated these are what we call as quartal chords or the voicing technique could be called as quartal voicing let's get cracking with that so with quartal chords this is how they are formed first of all on the g major scale okay they sound a bit uh, kind of uh, they sound a bit different than what you would normally hear mainstream because the intervals used to form them are not thirds they are fourths they're not even fifths so you have thirds used for triads you have fifths sometimes which we saw already in the lesson used quartal chords are very different because they are built using fourths there are three types of quartal chords so i'm going to run you through them these three types of quartal chords can also come diatonically from the scale or you can learn them as a separate formula so the first basic quartal chord i'm going to show you all of them with respect to g okay to build a quartal chord the normal quartal shape would be root perfect fourth and from the perfect fourth another perfect fourth So essentially it's 1, 4, 7 flat in terms of intervals. That's the vibe. There are some other quartals as well, two more in fact. So what is this chord again? It's root, perfect fourth and major seventh. We call this as a G quartal plus chord or a Q plus chord. How do we build it again? Root, perfect fourth, major seventh. Perfect fourth of G major would be C, major seventh would be F sharp, right? 
In fact, the first quadrille chord in the G major scale would be this one. Could also call this an Ionian chord because it's a very Ionian representation, Ionian mode. And the other quartal chord you learn would be what we call as the sharp four quartal chord. So to build that root, sharp four, also known as the augmented fourth, and then the major seven. A very exotic sound. You'd use this very rarely, but it's there. It's a nice shape. Adds a lot of tension. Can bring out a bit of the a Lydian vibe. Because of the sharp four, so you have normal quartals, which I'm going to use a lot of in this lecture. Then you have the quartal plus, which brings you that major seventh with a perfect four here, and then you have sharp four Q. a bit exotic in nature so these are all your quartal chords so how do you use them with an existing triad based chord progression right you have g major e minor a minor d so the way i go about it is you play g e a d and quartal chords will help if the duration of the the chord itself is longer so let's take maybe four counts per chord as opposed to two which is which could also happen so four beats per chord and now you explore the first I, we've put it there in a map so you will have g q plus a q b q then c sharp four q d quartal E quartal and F sharp quartal. When I say quartal, I just mean perfect fourths. When I say quartal, I just mean perfect fourths. It's the other ones which are the on the exotic side. So, uh, doing the G major scale again in quartals, then A D G B E A. C F sharp B D G C E A D F sharp B E G C F sharp down. So if you are on a G major chord, maybe you could play G major like this. You could go. you could essentially access any of the seven quartals which you feel works well with that root so g does a quartal work sounds normal because it has the g but that sounds very very interesting what what if you want to do c the sharp four quartal chord maybe d g c is more normal i love e a d f sharp b e options are endless well not endless there are seven options so in other words what i'm trying to say is for every major chord since you are on the g major scale you can test out all the seven quartals with the root g so you could see what you like or use many like over the duration of the g major chord you could do is playing g major at this current moment but you are fooling around with so many other shapes then you go to e i like this e minor put it together g major 
E minor, the sharp four, A minor, then D, D. All over the same old chord progression which you're given. What I like about quartals is you have so many more variations. It's not just you don't have to commit to one. You can change it during the gig, during the chord. You can have one for the recording, one for the performance, and so on and so forth. So that's about quartal chord. So in this lesson, we've taken a standard chord progression, G, E, A, D, pop stuff, and looked at five ways to make it. a lot more sophisticated with very simple techniques using just the knowledge of your major scale a few intervals here and there within the scale and one or two concepts along the way hope you guys found the lesson useful if you did please let us know about it in the comments give the video a like do consider getting our handwritten notes on patreon it will help our channel go a great way and if you haven't already don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications thanks a ton for watching the video cheers catch you in the next one